Yeah, absolutely. I think we had a lot of players who played in that 90s era. Until about 1995, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan team were recognized as, you know, like the good old Calypso cricketers. They were lovely guys, great yeah. bunch of players, played with grace, beautiful to watch, but unfortunately lost more than they won. Uh, 95 really changed that under Arjuna because when Murali was called for, for throwing in Australia, and when Sri Lanka took that stand um, under Arjuna, the team kind of unified because up until that time, even for the public, they were so crazy and passionate about cricket, but they never battle cry, you know, other than just the cricket, right? They didn't have anything else beyond the game that really brought them and felt them personally attached to the cricketers. But suddenly when Murli was called, Murli suddenly became hey, hold on, no one's touching our star. No one is, is, is touching our, our brother, you know? So we are going to gather around him and this is going to be us. Not just the team, but the whole country suddenly kind of embraced that one situation, that one player. And the entire focus was, hold on, we were treated unfairly, Murli was treated unfairly, and this is the catalyst that really set the tone and set the road and the path towards winning a World Cup. So beyond... 2000 and sorry 1999 when Sri Lanka's defending champs were knocked out of the first round in England in the in the in the World Cup there was a huge cry for change so Sana Jayasurya takes over the captaincy uh, Mavan Atapattu Mahela Javadan already a senior player when I joined the team Mahela had already played two and a half years of international cricket right um, we had Murali and Vasi who were stars in their own right Aravind and Hashan Tilakaratna, who had been in the, in the wilderness after 1999, but came back when I started. Um, so we had a really great mixture of people who kind of brought all the old knowledge and that experience from that journey from 95 to 99. And then we had this new breed of players who suddenly saw that and were inspired. So one of the biggest things that changed in our dressing room was the hierarchical system. Because in the old days, right. I mean, you would also notice, you know, it's very like you have the seniors, you have the juniors. Juniors are not expected to talk much or contribute much. They're expected to listen, do what they were told. So that's how we grew up. And unfortunately, that's not a healthy, healthy thing in a dressing room for long periods of time. Sometimes, maybe from 93 to 97, that may have been what worked for Sri Lanka, where we had Arjun Ranadunga, the strong captain and the strong bunch of seniors, the most experienced, something that the, the, a lot of people don't realize. I think in 1996, Sri Lanka would have been the most experienced one-day side in the world in terms of one-day matches played. Right. But you saw the cracks beginning to appear when suddenly Aravinda became a star, Sanajaya Surya was a star, Vasi was a star, uh, uh, Murali was a star. And that kind of central, strong, ironclad control was not really working for the team. And you saw what happened in 99. So in 2000, under Sanat, it slowly started changing. And we were going and looking for, for strong individuals who were not only talented, but had strong ideas and opinions to contribute. And we, we, we welcomed different opinions. You know, youngest players standing up and saying, you know, giving, giving of their thoughts and the dressing room not going, oh, shut up, you're a youngster, what, what, what the hell do you know? But the dressing room going, yeah, he's got a point. Maybe he sees things slightly differently, so maybe let's, let's take that on board. Um, so we, we, we also had cricketers, like X-Factor cricketers suddenly coming through, Lasit Malinga, Ajanta Mendes, so on and so forth. Yeah. Guys who didn't look like a typical cricketer. But we were, as a team, willing to take a risk on getting them quickly into a side so that they provided us with that kind of the, the unpredictable, the unknown that we could surprise opposition with. Um, and the gel holding all of that together was definitely Muttai Murlidhar. Because he's an exceptional human being, annoying as hell in the dressing room because he bloody talks all the time and he's always critical and always saying things that annoy you. We had a rule that if you're going to bat, if you're going to bat next, you never sat next to Merle because he would come and tell you how good the opposition is and how bad you are. But the guy has an absolute heart of gold. He's such a humble man. He has no ego. So for a man who was revered in Sri Lanka, 
he always spent his time with the youngsters in the team he would be in the back of the bus playing jokes with them you know talking to them as as an equal and that really helped build the confidence up of the youngsters you know much more than what mahila i ever did because you had this one guy who would go to a hotel call up the youngsters and say listen i'm going for dinner what do you guys want for dinner i'll bring it back then he'll go out bring all the dinner back to his room and call everyone and say okay dinner's here come and come and eat with me you know and he'd help the youngsters he'd answer questions with them and he was just like one of the guys so that really helped to break barriers down break the ice and really get the youngsters involved in our team culture and we had certain standards we set down we we were very competitive not just with other teams ravi but also in between us so we were we, you know, if one guy got 100 it was like a matter of honor that everyone tried to follow that you know get get one get two get a double get to 10000 runs so we were kind of chasing milestones alongside each other and that kind of healthy competitive nature really helped us and our dressing room ravi if you ever if you ever came into a dressing room there was never a talk of contracts in terms of who got more money or who got more more uh, more corporate endorsements it is nothing like that i mean we had we had rules like if we had man of the match and man of the series awards that were usually shared out among the team we had a specific bank account that we used to maintain under the manager's name and wow. all that money would go there and it was to help out people who needed urgent operations or medical treatments for themselves or the, for their for their children so we had various things that we brought in to try and make the team feel as if they had a duty socially to the fans as well to people beyond and outside the team and that connection for us with our fans with the people who watched us really helped so we had all these all these really kind of healthy um mechanisms in the side to keep ourselves grounded to understand that cricket was just a game and this helped us to do more things in life and to help other people with their lives so that kind of kept our focus kind of balanced rabi you know we knew that we had to work as hard to play cricket but at the same time the benefits that we gained from it was to be shared subscribe to our youtube channel for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the bell icon for our latest content